All right, sweet. Thank you. Hmm? Oh, it's just dust. Everyone quickly hurry up, backpack to the side. 
Can you get started? Academy. We have a team 
Uh, for the boot court, we will be uh, competing against Palau High School and also um, Nizenti um, on that morning. So if you're if you're around that area between nine and twelve, please come and support Palau Mission Academy. Um, this is an event sponsored by the Palau Bar Association. Uh, the attorneys, some of those attorneys have uh, are alumni from Palau Mission Academy, so we're thankful for them. Please make sure that you come out if you have a chance. Uh, Monday morning and support your debate team at the Supreme Court at 9 o'clock in the morning from 9 to 12. We also want to remind everyone that this Saturday night the freshmen are sponsoring uh, an event, a fundraiser, Christian Movie Night. They've been working very hard uh, for this. So if you happen to be anywhere in Karor, at near the SDA church, near the SDA gym, please come on by. The, the entrance is $3, okay? And it comes with popcorn. That's a great, uh, great price. And there will be food sold. There'll be hot dogs, vegetarian hot dogs, if you don't eat meat. There'll be brownies, there'll be uh, popcorn, there'll be uh, barbecue ribs, there'll be... Just kidding. <laughs> uh, but, but if you want to put barbecue sauce on your hot dogs, you can do that too. Um, please come out and support. There will be some good food. There will be delicious food. And we'll have a good time. The movie that will be uh, shown, the, the, pr the premiere for Palau on the big screen, is going to be God's Not Dead 3. God's Not Dead 3. It's a good movie. If you haven't seen it, come check it out. If you have seen it, support the freshman class anyway. Give them three bucks. Uh, help them out. Or a dollar. Any donation is good. Um, but three dollars will get you into the film. Okay. Uh, a couple other announcements. Uh, there's, there's a few of you, there are a few of you who will be taking the SATs. The SAT. This Sunday. Those of you who are taking the SATs, you received a little form from Ms. Amanda on how to be prepared for the SAT and what you need to bring on that day. <laughs> Please do not forget, this is very important. Those of you taking the SATs this Sunday, you need to be here at Palau Mission Academy by 7.45. Okay, 7.45. Please remember, if you come late, you will not be able to take the exam. You need to come early, 7.45, so you can prepare before the exam begins. All right, if you come without your proper documentation, you will not be allowed to take the test. Even though you say, but Miss Amanda, you know me, I go to this school. <laughs> Unfortunately, with these standardized tests, we have to be very, very precise. If you don't bring your IDs, you cannot take the test. Those are not our rules, we're just abiding with the guidance, okay? And then the last, the last announcement for this morning, we have uh, actually two more things quickly. We have uh, some guests that are going to be joining us this morning uh, here at our chapel. We have um, the CEO of Pickrick along with the um, the team from Pickrick who will be here, Dr. Lozu and, and the team. They will be presenting uh, a couple awards for uh, a couple winners, a couple students who have placed in the calendar contest. Those of you who don't know, those of you who don't know, the first place overall winner was a student from SDA Elementary School. That will be the cover uh, of next year's calendar. But we also have two uh, PMA students who also placed in the uh, calendar contest. That will be awarded this morning. They will be here in just a few minutes. Please make sure that you represent well and we have these guests here. With that being said, I need everyone to please sit up and demonstrate respect by your posture and by your attentiveness. I don't want to say it more than once. Please sit up, that means you're, you're sitting upright, you're paying attention, you're not sleeping. That's how you demonstrate respect. The last announcement is, we have the results for International Day. <laughs> did a wonderful job. I'd like to announce the winner of International Day after chapel. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>
All right, good morning, everyone. We didn't have a trivia Tuesday the last couple weeks. As you guys know, we were really busy, and uh, my marker stayed on my board and never, never put a, anything on there. So, so we did have many submissions come in at the last minute, which uh, brings us to our leaderboard update. And as you can see, it's very tight at the top. But we also have a lot of people pushing into the top 10 in these last few weeks, which is very cool to see. So uh, continue to jump on that. You can still get some entries in and make a push here in the last month of Chapman's Leaderboard. The theme for May is family. May's theme is family. So we want to see your, your essays, your poetry, your art, your watercolor, your, your video production, whatever it is. Any, any way that you can figure out to illustrate what this means to you. And uh, the deadline will be May 23, which is just in a few weeks. We're not gonna wait all the way to the end of the month because we want the seniors to be here by the time this is done. So May 23rd, you got just about a few weeks to get this done. The chaplains will be meeting up, not on uh, Monday, because there's no school Monday. So enjoy the day off, we'll probably hang out on Tuesday. Tribute Tuesday will be back. Bible study will be back to Wednesday next week. And more on Thursday will continue. Uh, those of you who made it yesterday, thanks for coming through. We're gonna we're gonna keep that going strong. Top ten. I have the forms for top ten ready for your selection. You'll be receiving them soon and throughout next week. You'll when you get your paper after you select your top ten songs, put it in the mailbox. All right. You'll get the paper, fold it up, put it in the mailbox. We'll tally the votes, and then we'll have top ten soon after that. And yet, yeah, there's still, somebody didn't get a letter that's in there, it's still in there. It's been there for a couple days. So go ahead and check that for the mail. All right, we're gonna sing some songs.
It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us safely through another week. Um, Thank you for Fridays, and thank you for your spirit. You always send it. Give us the energy and the strength to make it to this point. Help us to finish out to be strong, and uh, help us to, help us to enjoy it and to be blessed by the thought and uh, the videos that will be shared in the next few moments. Help it to be an encouragement to us and inspiration as we go through our days and for the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. <laughs>
Thank you so much to everyone who uh, submitted a uh, drawing, a poem, music, anything. Please put your hands together for your fellow. So this morning I want to share a short, short worship thought for you all this morning. And before we do so, let's have a quick word of prayer. Father, once again, we come before your throne, Lord, uh, humbly asking you to please help us, Lord, and guide us in our lives. Lord, help, help us to be conquerors. Help us to be um, victorious uh, in you. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So if you didn't know, if you didn't catch it, if you didn't notice, this month's theme was conquering and to conquer. Conquering and to conquer. So it's very important that we understand the definition of the word so we can understand uh, its true significance. So I did just that, and I'd like to define words and look them up to see their, their actual meaning. And conquer had three separate uh, definitions, or three uh, sub-definitions. Okay? The first one is pretty, is pretty uh, common, and most of us have heard the first definition. To overcome and to take control. To conquer, to overcome, and to take control. And we think of uh, world leaders, and we think of uh, very famous people who have conquered Alexander the Great and the, and the great uh, uh, Mughal Empire and, and uh, the different dynasties who have conquered. Then we also see the next definition is to successfully overcome a problem or a weakness. So that, that brings it down more to, to my level at least. I'm not gonna be out here conquering uh, you know, different uh, territories. I'm not going to be conquering any worlds. I'm not going to be conquering Nidikin or Airai. I'm not going to be conquering it, even though I'd like to be the, the chief of Nidikin. But, you know, that's... <laughs> thank you. So, overcoming a weakness or a problem. Overcoming a weakness or, or a problem. That is to conquer. And then the last definition... It, it was probably the most kind of vague. It's, it's, it just says two words. Climb successfully. Climb successfully. And in parentheses it says a mountain. All right. To, to conquer is to successfully climb a mountain. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, speaking of successfully climbing mountains, conquering, there's a very famous, uh, popular, uh, award-winning movie called Free Solo. Some of you may have seen it, some of you may have heard it, and this is actually the advertisement for it. It was released uh, sometime in 2018. It's a story about a rock climber, Alex Honnold, and his journey of climbing to the top of El Capitan, a very, very, very famous, beautiful uh, mountain, a flat-faced mountain, and he's climbing it. It's about his journey of climbing El Capitan, and the, the interesting part of Alex Ahamo is that he's a, a solo climber, free climber, which means that he's climbing this rock without any harnesses, without any rope, just with his hands. Nothing holding him, nothing helping him, preventing him from falling. Wow, now this guy's a conqueror. The movie is incredible. If you have not seen it, it's filled with uh, bravery, excitement, thrills, and, and all the good stuff. And Alex Arnold has become one of the greatest rock climbers in the world. He's strong, he's fit, he's agile, he's athletic, and of course, like you mentioned, he's a conqueror. Spoiler alert. Right? Alex uh, Hanel, he was recently asked in an interview who he looks up to, who are some of his mentors, some of the people that inspired him or continue to inspire him in his uh, rock climbing journeys. His response was surprising. He didn't list off a list of fellow uh, world-renowned rock climbers or, or, or solo climbers. He mentioned a man by the name of Eric Weinmayer. And the, the person interviewing uh, was interviewing him for a famous uh, uh, rock climbing news, uh, rock climbing magazine, and he paused and he said, "Eric who?" And Alex uh, Honnold he said, "Eric Weinmayer." 
and he went on to explain who he was. Now, Eric may not be famous for his free solo climbing, but he's recognized for climbing the highest mountains in every continent. This man has, has scaled the highest peaks in every single continent in the world. But there's something different about Eric than the free solo climber, Alex Hummel. And I want to show you guys a short four, four minute video, and I want you guys to pay close attention. When people say they summit for the view, I think they're missing a lot of the equation of why we do the things we do. The summit, honestly, is pretty anticlimactic. The movement is, for me, the most exciting part. My name is Eric Weinmayer, and I'm the first blind person to have climbed the tallest peak in every continent. When I was four or five years old, I was diagnosed with this incredibly rare disease called retinoschisis. It attacked my retinas and essentially unraveled them. When I finally went blind, it was a weird relief, like the worst thing had happened, so there's nothing else to lose. There was a recreational group taking blind kids rock climbing, and that was it for me. It was sort of the full package of adventure. All the things I thought I wouldn't have as a blind person. You need 14 for this pitch? Yeah, I'm counting them right now. Okay. When I get onto a rock face, I actually feel like I'm in my element. The things that sighted people learn to do with their eyes, I learn to do with my hands. When I'm clipping a bolt through a carabiner, I'm feeling it, I'm making sure it's correctly clipped, and if I fall, that that carabiner is going to hold me. I can't look up the rock and see the holds and plan a big route. I can only see as far as my hands. It's breathtakingly exciting. Sometimes you hear those cars way down below you in the floor of the canyon. I love that sound of emptiness. A lot of external stuff sort of disappears and you're thinking about nothing but that next hold in front of you. So it's very, very meditative, very much kind of like an inner mind sport. I like that, I think that's the best pitch. Could you feel that space, like the exposure down there? Yeah, I mean, especially with these trucks flying by down there, it kind of echoes to the whole canyon and you can hear everything. Yeah. What do you say to top out? Yeah, the summit's right up here, right? Yeah. Okay. As a blind climber, it's really hard and you just sort of have to embrace that suffering. Blindness is just a thing that happened to me. I think like all adversities, we got to use them as a catalyst to push you in new directions. It's the idea of turning bad things into good things, and it's something I think we all could use. So I don't know about you guys, but Eric Weinmayer is a conqueror. I mean, this man cannot even see. He has no sight, and he's able to do something that many people who have sight or, or have the abilities, more abilities than him, cannot do. There's a couple quick points that I want to mention that I want to encourage you this morning. Something that he mentioned is embrace the suffering. Use these adversities as a catalyst. Whatever is holding you back today, Whatever is, has become an obstacle in your life today, don't let that hold you back. Let that be what catapults you. Let that be what pushes you to succeed and pushes you forward. Another really important point that he mentioned, the top or the peak 
the goal, your goal, whatever goal that may be, whether it be to reach the end of the school year, whether it be to graduate on June 2nd, whether it be to pass your math class, whether it be to get that B plus that you need just to get you past that 65, whatever it is, whatever your peak and whatever your, your, the top of the mountain that is in your life, that's not necessarily the most exciting part. I wanna encourage you and remind you that the journey, the suffering, the climb is what makes you a stronger person. Remember all the hard times, the late nights that you crammed. Remember, remember those. That is what's going to make you a better person. When June 2nd comes and graduation day is over, you take off your cap and gown, and then what? Is that the top of your mountain? That is just part of your journey. Remember everything that you went through in order to achieve that goal. That's what makes you a better person. As great of a climber that Eric Weinmayer is, he cannot do it alone. If you notice, he was with someone the entire time, assisting him. As great of a climber as the blind Eric Weinmayer is, he needed a little bit of assistance. And I don't know about you guys here this morning, from freshmen to seniors to staff, whoever's here. Myself, I need a little bit of assistance every day. As a matter of fact, I need a lot more than a little bit of assistance. I need a whole lot of help. I want to remind you that you cannot do it alone. As great as your abilities may be, you cannot do it alone. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says this, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to remind everyone here this morning, and I want to share with you that if you didn't know already, all of you are conquerors. You are conquerors. Every day that you wake up, every morning that you wake up, when you accept Christ into your heart, say, today I will conquer. With your help, Jesus Christ, I will do it. I want to remind everyone, Please, every day, accept Jesus Christ into your heart. And those mountain peaks, those, those rock faces that you climb, those obstacles, you will be able to overcome them if Jesus is by your side. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I want to thank you once again for reminding us how powerful you are, Lord. Reminding us that you want to take us, you want to be there for us on our journey. Whenever we have difficulties, whenever we have hard times, Lord, that you will be by our side. Lord, we want to be conquerors every single day. And we can only do that if we invite you into our hearts. Thank you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we dismiss for chapel, we have a couple things that we need to uh, take care of. Um, first of all, I want to invite our guests up front. From Pickrick, please come forward. Thank you guys so much. Let's give them a round of applause. So, like we mentioned, like we mentioned, we have uh, a couple uh, awards to give out for some incredible artwork, and I'll pass uh, the microphone on. That. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So we're here because we have something to present. We're not going to take away your best time, so we'll be brief. Um, this year, for the Arts and Dice Calendar Contest for 2020, we have one runner-up from Palau Mission Academy and one first-place winner. And um, there were only 11 participants this year and we would like to encourage more participants to, to participate again because last year we had 47 students participated. This year we had only 11 and we want to encourage you again to participate next year. So the first runner-up, this student won last year and win again this year. 
Her name is Yuli Selina Sun. If you if you were not at the gym on Tuesday, yes. on Tuesday uh, afternoon, you missed out on a great game. Okay, I want to give a shout out to all of our girls basketball team for coming in second place. For the Both the members of the girls basketball team were at the stand. Thank you guys. At least you have a few uh, proud members here. We're very thankful. Um, also want to thank uh, Ms. Natalia and Coach Shepard Porter for helping out uh, this year quite a bit with the girls basketball team. And we're really proud of you. Um, for bringing home the second place trophy to Palau Mission Academy. You guys showed a valiant effort, and we're very proud of you. Give them one more round of applause for them. Thank you for standing. Anyway, so now, now, now back to um, International Day. Like I was saying, I'm very, very proud of everyone. Every single country, from Kenya to Peru to Palau to Japan to China to the Philippines to Korea, all did a fantastic job. It was incredible. Not only was the setup great, the actual the day, the events on the day, and the post, the cleanup was absolutely amazing. Give yourselves a round of applause. You're all winners. Without further ado, we're going to announce the top three places. <laughs> 
the top three places. And we'll post the other, we'll post the other places. And remember, it's not about first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh place. It's about representing the country, education, learning, and about representing Palau Mission Academy, which you guys have all done a great job at already. So with that being said, I'd like to announce our third place winner with an average total score of 63.2 points. And we did have to come down to the to the decimal points because these were very, very close scores. With 63.2 points, third place, put your hands together for Kenya. Kenya. Point two points, Kenya has third place with 65.3 points. Just a couple points difference. 65.3 points, we have second places. We have a tie for second place. We have a tie for second place. Not really. <laughs> So for second place, we don't have two teams tied. We have three teams with the exact same score of 65.3. So the three second place winners with the exact same score, please put your hands together for Team Peru. Also tied for second place, Team Japan. And also tied for second place with 65.3 points, Team Palau. place title was 65.3 points. The overall winner, 65.5 points. 65.5 points. It was a very close race. Yes. The first place overall winner of International Day 2019 with a total score of 65.5. The winner is Team China. Please congratulate Team China and I congratulate the rest of you all. You guys did a fantastic job. I'm really proud of you all. We're all winners. And with that being said, you're dismissed. Have a great day, everybody. Hurry to the first period. We're late. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs> Yes, don't be tardy. Don't be tardy. Junior and Senior Bob will be in the chapel. Junior and Senior Bob will be in the chapel.